we go. Uh, tuning is probably one of the most sophisticated and difficult things to understand. Uh, let me just mention a couple things that are real important here. Uh, your ears have to be decent, meaning to say if you're having trouble hearing or you're uh, uh, a person that's up in years or something and you're starting to lose your mm -hmm. sense of hearing, this could really play out. A role, meaning a bad one. Mm -hmm. uh, but the first thing to understand very basically is a lot of people think when they first start to play that they should have this automatic sense of hearing what's in tune and what's out of tune. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a guy in here not too long ago who is a 40-year player. Well, he thought he could tune and he thought he was playing in pitch all the time and I listened to him play and one of the first things I hear is a string that's out of tune. Let me demonstrate out of tune to you. Okay, now all these other strings are in tune. <laughs> Can you hear it? Yes. Yes. Now, I hear that as flat means it's too low. Mm -hmm. So, so what I do, I always tune with a pick too, mm -hmm. instead of my thumb. That's pretty quiet. It is. The pick is bright and clear and clean. You can hear it better. Very. There's a big difference. It's kind of like putting something under a magnifying glass or something. Mm -hmm. it brings it up close and you can see every little thing. Mm -hmm. Well, in hearing, <clears throat> that's the same way. Um, See, I can hear that in a minute. If I tune up in the morning, and uh, or whenever I approach the guitar, I don't just start playing. I always like to check my tune first, because I realize that if I play out of tune, the, well, it's going to sound like this chord. <laughs> well, you've been around enough to know that that doesn't sound right. You can't tell what it is, uh -huh. and you can't tell which note it is, but it just sounds sour. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and so, uh, as you learn to play guitar, needless to say, the strings you've got are the role. They're, they're producing the sound. So you ha should have a good set of strings. They should, it should be tuned to a proper way and to make everything come together. But I, I just want to get this pitch thing across. Uh, I have to listen. I played the G chord, which you can play this way or this way. It's just finger different. Yeah. Okay? But I go over each individual note. And I listen close and I say, that, that one note, that one sounds really out. Now, is that too high or is it too loud, low? And the words we use is, is it flat or is it sharp? Flat meaning it's too low, sharp meaning it's too high. Huh. Okay, we want it right where it's supposed to be, in tune. So we have to establish what that is. That's the reason why we sell a lot of these pieces here. Uh, very basically, this, is, uh, this has what we call a transducer in it. And it's a little thing about the size of a two toothpick underneath this flap, I mean this uh, uh, thing called the saddle. Okay. And it's sandwiched in between this, uh, the, this piece fits right into the bridge, this black portion being the bridge. Sure. And the saddle fits into that, but with a transducer, there's a little thin toothpick type thing. It's kind of black color, the size of a toothpick, and it fits underneath this and is squished down in between the bridge, which is this part, portion, and the saddle, which is this portion. So that transducer then is uh, uh, sandwiched in between, and and the strings go across the saddle like here. Mm -hmm. And what happens is the string vibrates, yes, sends a signal. The saddle picks it up, sends it down through the saddle, the vibration is, yes. to the transducer, which amplifies it. The transducer comes, well, in this case, if it was only just 
the transducer by itself without the preamps and everything that's built in mm -hmm. to this piece. As most of you know out there, uh, electronically we can do a ton of things. It used to be only in the recording studio we did it. But nowadays, uh, with this thing, you can control the bass, the mid-range, the high end, which is the high-pitched portion. Uh, you can add reverb and echo by running this through. Reverb is a real fancy thing that they used to use way early. Now it's very common. Uh, echo, you can make it echo back five times. Uh, you can uh, uh, do all kinds of things to a signal to, to bend it and make it do different things. But that's the beauty of what we call a transducer. Now, this transducer ends up coming out the tailpiece of the instrument, actually. Mm -hmm. And then that goes to an amplifier, which builds a little sound like this, and it's like this. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Uh, in fact, the amplifiers now that they use on a professional stage are so powerful, you better watch where you stand, because it can mess up your hearing if you are too close. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody in the medical field that knows anything about hearing uh, if you get anything so loud, so long, you can literally mess up your hearing. But anyhow, uh, in this situation, so this transducer um, is a really a gateway to a whole new realm, a whole new yeah. category to work with. In fact, we did a, a film on that this morning, uh, the difference between an acoustic guitar and then an acoustic guitar with a transducer amplification. And uh, they were the exact guitar, but uh, volumes really changed things. In other words, if I put it like this, it, it'd be a wall of sound coming out at you. It's enough to take out a window. <laughs> uh, that's, that's how powerful it can become. So you, basically one of the toughest things on an acoustic guitar was being heard. Before the transducer, before microphones, all you could do is beat the heck out of your guitar and get enough volume that maybe somebody in the front row could hear you. Now, now if I, if I had a note like that, maybe a, something as simple as that, I could make that so piercing through the transducer that you, you just go on to a whole new level when you tra uh, play a guitar that goes through, that, that's working with the transducer. <coughs> But this pitch category, getting back to where we were, um, uh, the pitch category can be really important if you're playing out of tune, like I am right now, it's a turn off. Now, I want you to just listen to what I'm doing. I listen to this, and I can hear all these other notes on here, yeah. which seem they blend. It's a mm -hmm. nice sound. But that one doesn't. <laughs> now, it can be diminished. Uh, just a little bit. Now, I've determined this as flat, meaning it's too low. Right. Now, I've got that memorized. I know where it's supposed to be. That's where it's supposed to be. And you're saying, I didn't hear much difference. Mm -hmm. But one's in tune and one's out of tune. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you hear a difference? Oh, yes. Now, it's still a little flat. A little bit better. Now, the interesting thing about that is, naturally, the guitar sounds better with blending notes, harmonies. Everybody's played the piano just... Well, I could play a... <laughs> well, that's not really a chord, it doesn't blend. Mm -hmm. But this one... Blends. And I know other chords that blend. A good part of playing guitar is learning chords at first. And you learn where, which finger goes where, mm -hmm. and what the name of it is. Mm -hmm. And then you play it. But being in tune is always part of it. Now, uh, that's the thing about a lot of groups. You can have uh, two people in there, or three people, that are blending together. Mm -hmm. If one is out of tune, it makes all of them sound out of tune. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in this light then, uh, 
you, you have to learn tune right away, as soon as possible, and you have to learn pitch right away. Because if you don't learn these two things, it's, it's just like balancing on a bike. If you don't learn to balance, you'll get on there and every time you'll fall over, virtually every time. Mm -hmm. Music is uh, no exception. And what the important thing is with people when, when they first start getting into music, when they first start doing it, it's important to, for them to realize that, hey, you're not, you don't just have an automatic sense of pitch. You develop it just like anything else. You can't talk until you learn the words. You have to learn the word, how it's pronounced, how it goes into a sentence, and all of the above, to be able to do something like I'm doing here. You have to understand me in order to get something from this subject. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, what we do very basically, uh, I always uh, start a student out with a guitar, first of all, that comes in tune, some of them won't even come in tune. People don't realize that. Uh, they have such strings that the string is a waver in pitch all the time. And uh, it's old. It's uh, very much like a car tire. A car tire, when it's new, it's perfectly balanced. And at 80, 90 miles an hour, it'll spin evenly. But let's take an old tire and spin it at 80, 90 miles an hour. The thing, centrifugal force, which is a force that as on that tire, when it spins fast enough, it will just fly apart. Now, the new tire, perfectly balanced, will just spin. And it'll spin at, you know, a tremendous rate before it blows out. Mm -hmm. uh, tires are speed rated, so you know how fast you can go before <laughs> the thing literally disintegrates on you. <laughs> it's a value if you're driving a car on a highway. Okay. So, in this thing, uh, situation with string, it, it fans. In other words, when I strike this, you can see it more on a bass note. Look at this string here. It, it looks kind of blurry when you look at it real close when I strike it. Mm -hmm. okay. So what that's doing is it's, it's fanning out, but in the process, it's producing a sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, a string that is dirty and grubby, that's been your hand perspire and so forth, uh, it gets um, uh, it gets dirty, and the oil from your hand literally starts to show on a string. It rusts and it decays like any metal pipe. You can see it. And as it gets, as the dirt gets distributed, which it would if you play, mm -hmm. that it's like a tire again. The tire wears, and it wears, un pretty soon the tire wears unevenly, depending on the turns you make and how much you brake and, you know, how you brake and everything. So if that wheel is sliding, well, it's wearing the rubber off of that. And it's changing the distribution of rubber on that tire. So at higher speeds, sometimes that weight variation is going to cause problems. It's going to cause the wheel to do what we call shimmy and shake at a higher speed. So a string does the same thing. Uh, now, as guitar luthiers, when we build a guitar, needless to say, we have to know all about these little things. And uh, I always stress, you have to be a musician first before you can be a luthier. Because the luthier, is built out of the things that you learn from a musician. As a musician, you learn to know what you need. I need a string that's quality, that's built quality. I need it clean. Uh, uh, I want uh, a particular tone off of it. Some, to uh, some strings sound different. We have a nylon string and a steel string. And those are two different materials completely, and they produce a different tone. A nylon string, many times used in big orchestras, is a, considered a classical guitar. And uh, they're strung a lot like this is. Well, for the most part, they attach them differently and everything. But the tone initially is different. A nylon strung guitar tends to uh, have a mellower, softer sound. Steel strings are sharp and shrill, and they can be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
up. So in this situation, when that string starts to get old, and as we wear it, you say, well, why do you change strings on your guitar? I like to change strings. Oh, gee, a lot of people will go through uh, two years or three years before they change. I, if I'm going to do a recording session that's important, that I have a good sound and a good tune, I like the first hour and a half off of those strings. L longer, the string, as it deteriorates, and as your, the oils of your hand get into the string, they throw the balance of the string. So when you strike it and it fans out, a clean string will fan out and go back in and die. A dirty string will fan out and it will wobble. And as it wobbles, again, we're putting this under a microscope, looking at it and <laughs> dealing with it, uh, it starts to waver in pitch. Now, what is pitch? Pitch is high or low. Now, a string has pitch and it has a tone. A tone uh, deciphering what kind of sound is it. The pitch deciphering whether it's high or low. Question so far? Okay, <laughs> okay. In this situation, we learn that that string. Now you don't hear a waver in it. A waver would be going like this. Mm -hmm. And if we're wavering our pitch, that means that pitch is not consistent. It keeps changing. A string that is wavering cannot be tuned. It's impossible to tune it because. One millisecond, it's at one pitch, and the next millisecond, it's another. It's at another pitch. So you can see where this really gets involved. But if you had to explain how uh, pieces on your car work, well, anything from the brake shoes to the uh, spark plugs to the electric motor or whatever it is, uh -huh. <clears throat> gets very sophisticated, and we accept it as the norm nowadays. But we all know that that automobile is a product of a lot of research of many years. And different parts from the tires to the wheels to the brakes, the steering, the engine, the horsepower, all the stuff that goes into the car, uh, car they're getting even more and more sophisticated. Now we've got the electric cars that they don't make any noise at all. On, a, on the old one, they had the mufflers and the, we, we don't have the pollution then with an electric. I mean, it, it just goes forever. Uh, acoustic guitars and electrics, that's a whole new world again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, some of the things are the same, but they change a lot. This happens to be one that is both. This is an acoustic, which you can hear now, but if I run this through and plug it into a big amplifier, again, I could move the wall with it if I wanted to. It's, it's the beauty of it. And a whole new, like I say, a whole new dimension that we're working with. So in this situation though, it starts out with getting it in tune. Mm -hmm. So if we have a clean string, I hit it and I can tell whether it's sharp or flat. Now, now tuning gears, now, now I've got that down far enough, it's, it's actually a seventh chord. <laughs> I've got it so far out of tune. But if I put it back in tune, got that memorized. I just go right up to there. Say, can you tell me uh, how high 10 feet is? Well, 10 feet is here, or 10 feet is here. Oh, it's probably quite a ways out. But could you point out to me when exactly when we got 10 feet? Well, if you had a ruler or maybe a tape measure, you could measure it. But can your eye measure and count those off? That's pretty hard to do. So is pitch. So, in other words, I'll give you an idea. Uh, we have electronic tuners now to avoid all this problem. I strike the note and I press a button here and turn it on. Okay. You can see it flashing there. Okay, that means the tuner is on. Yes. Now, we have a red light here and a green light. Okay, it tells me that that's an E. Here's my E. Now that's immaterial. You don't really need to know that. But when I hit it, that's red right now. It means it's not in tune. 
Okay. Green means go, right? <laughs> okay. basically to explain it in a way that is easiest for you the mm -hmm. novice mm -hmm. to understand <clears throat> is red is out of tune mm -hmm. and you keep going up and down until you find green mm -hmm. and it'll show up green <laughs> so that means it's in tune I need you don't that. have to hear anything that's beautiful <laughs> I wish I would have had that many years ago I had a pitch pipe and I'd blow the pitch pipe and I'd say well the pitch sounds like a well I had it here I can't demonstrate right now but you blow the pitch on the pitch pipe, uh -huh. and you match your string to it. Is it flat from that, or is it sharp? Mm -hmm. And you keep tuning and tuning until you hear it matches. <laughs> okay. Now, this is an E. The second one is a B, or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. We identify the name. Now I want to tune B, and we go with the red thing. Again, is it red or is it green? Mm -hmm. And you go through each individual string like that until you get everything in tune. Then when you play a chord, everything's in tune. Now, you learn all your chords naturally that blend. That doesn't blend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no such thing as blend, it's noise. So you do the same thing on a piano. If you just put your hand down, you, you don't know what the notes are, and it just comes out. It's not really in tune or anything. It's just a bunch of noise. Mm -hmm. But if you know exactly where those... Now everything comes together, and it blends. It's not magic. <laughs> By far magic. And when I first started out, oh, geez. Uh, I had really nothing. I didn't have an instructor. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, but I started out and I continued to play without an instructor. The only place that I've really trained is a whole new world. That's voice. Dame ni po tu la be and uh, uh, the a e i o u the vowel sounds, pitch up and down the scale, breathing, pronunciation. That's a whole new world. <laughs> So I've been into many worlds in my career. Luthier is a whole new world again. We're talking about luthier and sciences and pitches and things like that. Now writing, whole different thing. I can't tell you how many things through the years that I've done. Uh, uh, arranging, arranging, uh, that's what a conductor does. A conductor is responsible for every instrument out there and their pitch. They have to kind of be concerned of the rhythms. But now you got a violin and a cello and a bass and an oboe and a, where do they fit? That's a doctor of music when you get a conductor. But no. Now, what I do to give people an example, I learned to sing and I learned to play, and that was one thing. But then I got to the more sophisticated part. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with a guy by the name of Chet Atkins. In my time, he was one of the greatest. There are a lot of new ones now. The names are new, but the music is just as sophisticated, and they do a lot of the same things. Uh, your song, uh, it, it's kind of like a, a car. It has parts that go together. The car has wheels. It has brakes. It has a horn. It has a seat to sit in, a steering wheel, and all those parts that go together to make a car. A full arrangement is a lot of different parts. It has a bass line, a lead line, a chord structure, rhythm, and a bass. All, all these different parts that go together and you learn to arrange. Now, we wrote in the year 2525, but we also had to arrange it and then record it. There were words in it, syllables, harmonies for the voices, there was a bass player, we had horn players, we had all kinds of things going together. And what we would have come up with was a big chance. Well, our big chance learned 
turned into a it turned into a monster. I don't know if that's good or not bad, but it sure did affect my life to the tune of two two million copies that we sold. So, so it really isn't magic. It's a lot of training. And so, getting back to where I was, I started out strumming and singing, and I could do a lot of that. But as I got to be a better guitar player, I was introduced to people like this Chen Atkins. Mm -hmm. he, he died just recently. <clears throat> that was. A, it was a sad situation because he was one of the greatest artists we ever had. Mm -hmm. And uh, Country Field, he did a lot of, uh, you could always tell uh, who he arranged in the studio. He was a producer for RCA many years. And any of the artists that he produced, it just turned into gold. He had an ear for putting his stuff together and making it exciting to listen to. And uh, so getting back to this, I learned to make a long story short, there are four basic parts to a song. Lead line, chord structure, bass, and rhythm. Lead line is the melody line that you identify a song with. The chord behind it is the blending notes. The bass player fits into these bendy notes, make it a fuller sound, and the drum comes in and puts a rhythm to it. So you get these four basic parts, just like, just like the car with wheels and engine, shock absorbers and exhaust and whatever it has to go down the road. Okay, so so in this light then, uh, uh, I wanted to produce a whole arrangement. So I got to the point where my thumb was the bass player, so these are the bass notes, the two blending notes, structure and the lead note was so everything is there now the neat thing about Chet Atkins which I heard he's doing all of it and I'm sitting there saying my god he's playing all those chords and everything and he can do some fancy things all the fancy stuff that he threw into it. Now there are other guitarists out there that are, you know, as good as he was and come close. But he was he was probably one of the best. Uh, but what was really exciting was it got me to a whole new level, which I'm at now. In other words, uh, there are lick players. There they do fancy licks and all kinds of things that fit into the chords, and boy, they really put a bunch of flash into that piece. Somebody else is doing the chord structure. Some You have a drummer, the bass player, or there'd be an upright bass, mm -hmm. cello, whatever, and a bass player, a lot of them are electric now, and uh, they get that big booming sound on the bottom. They fill out everything out. And then the drummer, snare drum, bass tom, all the things that go, you know, uh, the bass pedal that they play with the drums gets that, you know, uh, the bass note carries on with that bass sound. It makes it flowing instead of just a, a bass thing that hits you in your chest, mm -hmm. which you hear a lot of pieces. You just uh, listen to the stereos nowadays. Goes, <laughs> I listen to them go past the house and you can hear the bass go through. <laughs> but but uh, the bass, it has a science of its own also too. But the point I'm getting at is that persist, uh, particular system enabled me to do everything at once. Uh, I now, at this stage of my playing ability, I think, of, I think a lot like a conductor does. A conductor is concerned with all four of those parts for a complete arrangement, as we call it. And you do that arrangement the same way every time, same bass, uh, whether it's a walking bass or just an alternate bass or what. Then we add more things to that, a counter string line. A counter string line is like two melody lines. There'll be one melody line going this way and the other melody line going another way. That gives more perspective and depth to your arrangement. So pretty soon you have a lot of pieces coming at you at the same time. And naturally this is more sophisticated uh, depending on how it's done. 
It can be a masterpiece, like 2525 turned into. We didn't know it was going to turn out that way. We just put it together. And this is something, you know, and that was back in the days when the words were real important. Uh, in the year 2525, if man is still alive, it presented a very scary picture to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I have so many people walk up to me and say, oh, that was so many years ago, but you scared the living the Jesus out of me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you can see why, because we had lyrics in it that made it interesting. We had counter string lines, we had a rhythm, we had guitar, bass, drums, all those parts to make it interesting, and then we added the words, which is a bit of magic in itself. Uh, uh, I, I, I thought of Evans many times. That was back in the days of, of uh, uh, way back when, 30 years ago. And uh, yeah, you, you, uh, you got high, high on drugs one day and put a bunch of words together, and this is what it came out. <laughs> but, uh, but sometimes uh, you feel around with music and you discover all kinds of things out there. Mm -hmm. And whether they be rhythms, harmonies, or whatever. And this playing full arrangements enabled me to think like a conductor. And uh, naturally the system, I had it figured out so I could keep this thumb going. I had enough fingers to go around to play those parts. My lead line is always this finger when I play. Mm -hmm. uh, blending notes were these other two fingers, and the bass player is down here. So... Uh, in that way, I could do everything at once. Uh, I could uh, change it. I could change the rhythms. Uh, I could do all sorts of things. So what was really exciting to me is the fact, <clears throat> excuse me, that I could do it all at once, all by myself. Uh, I can think of many times uh, being playing in nightclubs. And uh, I started out, well, I'd do a finger style, which I could get the alternate bass notes and stuff in. Mm -hmm. But then I got to the point where uh, I could back my voice very well while I was doing this. And I need this to say, this is expanding, doing more and more things at once. Uh, I could vary the phrasing. Now, the phrasing is the way we use a melody line time-wise. And uh, 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 that can vary and put color to it too. Different harmonies and things like this. So uh, the thing that I really liked about the system is I could do so many things at once, enable, enabling me to think like a conductor and produce what a conductor does. A full arrangement with all this color coming out. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, then naturally, uh, expanding my re repertoire, different kinds of music. Well, are you gonna play country? You're going to play jazz, or folk, or rock. They're all different kinds of personalities that you can go after. And uh, the new groups and entertainers nowadays, it just keeps evolving and evolving. And uh, uh, in the days of Presley, oh geez, you know, that, that was a whole new world then, and it is now. And, and uh, uh, he did things naturally, just like anything else on stage, People don't realize it, but that entertainer gets on stage